Okay. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us at our uh, third, our number three webinar on electronic shelf labels. Really an amazing piece of technology here. Uh, I think you'll see how electronic shelf labels can help you in your retail store. And uh, I've been a lot of people have asked me, can I afford electronic shelf labels and go through how they're very affordable and they'll pay for themselves. But the more I look into this, I think the better question is, can you afford not to install electronic shelf labels in your store? If it be our electronic shelf labels or somebody else's, you really want to ask yourself if you can afford to not install them. Uh, let's go over our agenda for the day. We might diverge for a minute based on the questions, and we'll do some basic housekeeping things. First of all, all the attendees' uh, mics have been turned off just to keep things quiet here. Uh, if you have questions, though, you can email us, probably the email address for us, or over on your uh, right-hand box there, right-hand screen, there should be a, a chat box. You can ask questions. We'll ask them anytime. Feel free to ask questions anytime. We will be having a question answer at the session at the end there. So just to introduce me, uh, my name is Mark Turner, Senior Sales Rep at American Retail Supply. Been here a long time and then a few years before that. Really enjoy technology learning about my customers' businesses and not just selling you stuff, but helping you grow. And then we have Elizabeth. Um, hi, Elizabeth Stewart. I'm a customer advocate here at American Retail Supply. I joined the company towards the end of last year um, as a member of the sales and customer service team. I've been working in customer service for probably longer than I like to admit, um, working across multiple industries, but my passion is definitely in retail. Um, and I look forward to continuing our conversation. I've been working with Mark on the electronic shelf label project for several months now, and I've had the opportunity and privilege to speak to lots of different customers, trying to understand their needs, what they're considering for, um, the usage of the electronic shelf labels and also helping them um, determine their uh, what their cost benefit analysis would be. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. And then we have a guest star or a guest uh, a guest here that didn't know about till today. Her, her name's Kaylin. She'll introduce herself. But the reason I wanted to have Kaylin in here is I we were in a presentation with Ace. Ace is really considering our labels. I happen to be 300 miles away from my main office, and this person was talking about using the software, and I thought for sure this person, Kaylin, worked for Display Data, but she worked for us, yay. So Kaylin, you wanna say hi? Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. <laughs> Sorry. You want to say, say a little bit about yourself? <laughs> yeah, so like Mark said, my name's Kaylin. I'm the sales assistant here for American Retail Supply. Um, so I'll work with our sales team, um, as well as our vendors to make sure and get you guys um, the items that you need. Um, like Mark said, one of my big projects was um, kind of figuring out how to integrate electronic shelf labels into a business. Um, and I know we'll talk more about that um, later, but yeah, I really worked on um, designing ESLs, how they can fit in with your point of sale system um, and just how to operate them on a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah. Well, thank you, Kaylin. So, yeah, and then it, we're going to go here our agenda. We're going to talk about American retail technologies, the return on investment with electronic shelf labels, and and uh, how they're applied in the store, and why you want to do display data. So, let's get into it here. American retail technologies. I've been with the company 1981, March 1st, 1981, was my first day, and I think it was about. 10 years after that, we got a MS-DOS program called the Smart Retailer, one of the first independent uh, retail uh, applications out there. And we saw at that time technology was gonna drive retail. So we've opened this division, it's called Retail Technologies, and we have a lot of different products to help the independent retailer remain profitable. But here, of course, we're talking about display data, electronic shelf labels. Due to our size, we have many, many, many thousands of independent retailer customers. Could have sold anybody's electronic shelf label. Uh, 
but we chose display data. We strongly feel it's the best ESL company out there. Electronic shelf labels, what they can do for you. Well, let me uh, count the ways. Let me count the things. Electronic shelf labels have many, many, many advantages. You're going to boost sales. You're going to outperform your competitors that don't have uh, electronic shelf labels due to the interaction. We'll go through some of the reasons, but there are so many. One thing I didn't realize until I talked to this, this, this customer, I think he was in the grocery business, as I recall, who had done electronic shelf labels is the employees were happier. They didn't have that mundane job of changing out labels. Uh, they, they were able to focus on what their passion is, which is technology, as any kids these days. Um, uh, they're working with the customers and what you hire them for instead of changing out labels. Uh, quickly and accurately change promos. And real important, uh, connect with the millennials and every other tech savvy people. Uh, electronic, uh, excuse me, uh, paper shelf labels, I'm almost looking at them as a newspaper. Who knew, who reads newspapers anymore? Electronic shelf labels, where it seems like it's programmed in us to look at a screen. And those are some of the benefits of electronic shelf labels. So uh, truth in advertising. To explain to you, uh, we'll be talking about some facts and figures here on electronic shelf labels and how they're going to uh, perform for you or how they perform for somebody else, I should say. And But no two situations are ever the same. So we'll get into your business later and how we can help you decide if electronic shelf labels are right for you and how to implement them. But here's an, this will be an overview of past experience with electronic shelf, with electronic shelf labels. So return on investment, ROI. You probably calculate ROI a lot with your different investments. And we're going to go on a return on investment scenario on one individual electronic shelf label. I think you'll find this pretty interesting. I, I know I did. So there are a lot of factors to consider when you're looking at electronic shelf labels. First of all, you're going to have uh, direct labor savings, uh, excuse me, labeling savings, which include disposable labels and label holders, the labor it takes to do them. You can be able to maximize profit by having the right price on there, be able to be flexible with your pricing. As I mentioned, free up customer employees to serve customers. And some exciting promos. Uh, we don't go over a lot of these different ideas in this, in this webinar, but we certainly can have an individualized one for you. But here are some of the factors to consider when calculating ROI on your ESLs. But we're gonna look at one specific product, which is this chocolate chip cliff bar here and one particular letter label which is called a chroma 29 which is about a an inch by an inch and a half label that they have and see how quickly this $21.78 label is going to pay for itself the return on investment on this label so you can see it here it sells for $2.39 a margin of 35 percent you sold uh, three of them average per day they're open 363 days a year, so a little over a thousand a year. Total profit on this uh, Cliff Bar is $914. Um, so these are the scenarios that they use to determine if this electronic shelf label is going to pay for itself and how quickly. Easy one relatively easy is calculating how much labor you're going to save by not switching out the label. Uh, we'll go over that. Uh, displaying the customer reviews, we have, they assumed a 1% increase in sales for having reviews on the shelf on selected products. I think that's extremely conservative. According uh, to Bazaar Voice Network, a very interesting site. Uh, 
their study showed one a single good review could increase sales by as much as 10 percent and again uh, they assumed a one percent if you want to see that study let me know i can get it to you I don't know if anyone here in the room shops on the internet. If you do, if you ever look at reviews and how many times you've seen reviews. Anyway, um, back to the matter at hand. Uh, having the right price is going to increase your sales. They assumed it was going to increase the sales by half a percent and a 0.25% increase in margin by having the right price. So those are the basic assumptions. And I think they're very conservative some things myself. Uh, they figured it cost a quarter each time they changed the label for the labor and the uh, the labels themselves. They changed labels 25 times a year. Therefore, by having the electronic shelf labels on the um, on there, they saved six dollars and 25 cents a year. And uh, the one percent increase in in Sales had another roughly 11 units they sold, so additional $9.14 in profit for that, as you might recall, $21 label. We're not, what? Wait, we're not done yet. Uh, again, we saved $6.25 on the uh, material and labor for that label. Uh, customer reviews increased uh, by 1%, which is extremely conservative uh, so they're nine dollars and fifteen cents up in the positive there having the right price not too low not too high increase the uh the sales by four dollars and fifty seven cents and based on the half percent and your margin was up by six dollars and fifty one cents by not having too low of a price on the shelf therefore this 21 dollar uh, label 21.78 Chroma 29 label it paid for itself in under 10 months. So after that, it was a pure money machine. But I thought when I first read this, I thought, well, why would they put a label on a $2 cliff bar? So just imagine what your return on investment could be if uh, it was on a higher dollar or higher margin item. You could sell if you sold one extra camera a year. If you sell cameras or one extra bigger dollar item a year, by having that electronic shelf label, you pay for itself. That label is paid for due to one sale on a on a higher margin on a higher margin item. So, I the first time. It was actually the first quote that I had for electronic shelf labels was a grocery store, kind of an innovative, cutting edge uh, health food grocery store. He was in the industry well before uh, Whole Foods was as big as it is. I know I'd been selling to this guy since the mid 80s and he wanted me to quote him electronic shelf labels. So uh, I asked him how many, he said 250,000 labels. So I thought, wow, that's I'm not going to quote that. So I quoted him a tenth that. I quoted him 25,000 labels when I should have quoted him 25 labels at first. A big mistake. Uh, that's what we call a proof of concept. We'll kind of go over that. What it has to do with is trying out a few labels. And what's really important is to try these few labels out in the in the right place in the store. So here we'll go over a few ideas that other people has used. But again, no two people are the same. No two stores are the same. We'll help you determine where you want to put your labels. Here is a hardware store, layout of a hardware store, and it shows where the proof of concept, when you're going to try these labels out, where you might want to place them. So certainly on the end caps, um, in uh, uh, items that are on promo, the appliances are a good place to uh, put electronic shelf labels because they have the amount of information on there. So in this proof of concept here, we started with 25 to 70 items. This proof of concept lasts 90 days. 
And how that works is you have the labels there for 30 days. We help you analyze the profitability of it. 60 days, same thing, then 90 days. And you're able to see if and how quickly they're going to pay for themselves. Typical investments between $1,500 and $3,500 for the proof of concept. Same thing here for a grocery store. Get the idea here. Again, I would really like to talk to you individually, each of you, and see where your proof of concept is going to be best done. And then a, a, a liquor store. One uh, thing in the, in the liquor business is it's a very information-driven uh, industry, and that so you would have what you would want to have in items that are uh, people are going to want to know that information. I don't know how else to word that there. So just in review, no matter what type of business you have, be good to use it for items on sale or with a rebate. I was in that meeting with Ace and they were talking about rebates. If anyone here has rebates in their store that are manufacturer driven rebates, it's very common at Ace stores to have rebates by the manufacturers. For instance, Weber, you get a rebate on a Weber. But the sales associate doesn't remove that uh, sign. They, 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 they leave it up. And wanting to be good uh, customer service, they honor that rebate. But they're just taking money out of their pocket and it's gone forever, giving it to the customer. Uh, he estimated, he said one, if he avoided giving one rebate, it would pay for the label. Kaylin, am I right that you could schedule this? Let's say that we have a rebate and it expires uh, January 12th. Could you program it ahead of time to have that rebate go away? Absolutely. Um, you can schedule by the day or by the month. Um, so it just depends on how long the rebate's going. Um, okay. But then once it ends, you can schedule it down to within a you know 30 minute time frame. So right. once the rebate ends, immediately um, the new price would show okay. uh, or the original price would show. So could I go back and forth? Let's say that I, that I wanted to have a sale every Tuesday where this item's on sale every Tuesday. Could I have some sort of schedule on that where? Yeah, absolutely. Um, each electronic shelf label um, can hold so many prices and you can schedule those once a week, twice a week. Um, so yes, you could definitely do that. Cool, cool. So thank you. And then um, yeah, items that the quantity on hand is, is important. I really like this idea if you look at that label for shoes. Worst thing is you're there at the shoe store and you find the shoe you really like and you finally find the guy who can help you go to the back room and get that shoe and guess what? They don't have your size. Well, here it shows which sizes are in hand. High information items like this whey protein here. People want to know all this fancy it does. And of course, items that change price often. Produce, that's why we use them in the produce industry a lot is when the prices change, you change the price in your point of sale, it changes on the label if you have the two talking to each other. So it's very advantageous that way. So some of the ideas where you might want to use your electronic shelf labels to start when you're starting in on this. Now, I um, hope we're not going over this too quickly for you here. Uh, why display data? Many different electronic shelf label companies out there, some good, some not so good. We feel that display data is the best. They have over, well, this is a little old slide, over 20 million labels installed the last I heard worldwide. The best labels in the, in the, in the industry, I can very confidently say that. Very light in infrastructure, meaning all you need for the labels to communicate is this little box that's about as big as your cell phone or so. It'll do up to 50,000 square feet and up to 25,000 labels from this little box that is self-powered. 24-7 um, customer service, it's a, a great company, which is why we par partnered with them. They have a lot of label sizes, 
from all the way to the 1.6 inch to 12 and a half inch. So you're going to have the right label for the right product and the right shelf. They also have their chroma series, which are the uh, black and white. The other ones here, which is the, oh, we have a wrong slide. Those are the Arias ones here. So, sorry. Anyway, uh, the, 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 back to these, they're, they come in red, black and white, or yellow, black and white. And these are the Aria ones, which are black and white. Uh, that are used most of the major r retailers that are uh, doing electronic shelf labels have chosen display data. I don't know if anyone here in the room has been in a Kohl's. Kohl's have these LED, which is not the same technology in their stores. They're very hard to read. You have to be right in front of them. If you're off to the side, you're not going to see it. Well, Kohl's has decided that they are going to switch to display data and they're going to have to reinvest millions and millions of dollars, but it's worth it to them because it's a much better label. So Walmart is also uh, looking at uh, display data. They haven't chosen display data yet, but they are trying them out in some of the stores. If you want to see a, a electronic shelf label, if you want to see one in action, if you have a Home Depot in your store in your town, go to the appliance department of Home Depot. And you should see from what my understanding is, some of the display data labels on the appliances because they're trying out in the appliance section. Um, what I have here is the future of brick and mortar. Everybody is really concerned about their business that's in brick and mortar retail. We have this retail apocalypse. Everything is in this big turmoil, but it's really not. The, it's really not. Sure, you're going to have to adapt. Everybody's going to have to adapt, but still the majority of sales that are done are done in a retail store. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. The omni-channel retail is important. Omni-channel is everything for retail survival, in my opinion. Well, electronic shelf labels can help you with that, with the omni-channel experience there. But just like anything else, the retailers of the future, any business of the future needs to adapt. Pan Am didn't adapt, uh, Kodak didn't adapt. In order to survive, you must adapt. Re uh, electronic sh shelf labels are part of that adap adapting to the, the modern times. Well, and, and Mark, if I can jump in here really quickly, I think just as important as adapting is being innovative to stay competitive in, um, you know, this marketplace. Um, and that's by sharing, having the ability to share more information about your products than potentially your competitors. So we're seeing some of the retailers using the electronic shelf labels, not just for pricing and product description, but having a QR code where you can, um, you know, process that and then get more feedback on different products. Um, a, a local liquor store was thinking, is thinking about using them. We're having conversations about putting the, the vineyard that their wines are from and stories about the vineyard and even having recipes on what food pairs well with wine. So I think innovation is also important there too. That is an excellent point, and not just adaption. I didn't even consider that. In innovation, changing, being ahead of the curb instead of behind the curb. You'd much rather be on the right side of this uh, slide than on the on the left side of this slide. Electronic shelf labels are gonna are gonna help you there. So, and now, if what's the next step? You ask. Well, most people will say, I want to get a price quote, which, of course, would be happy to get your price quote. Just need some information about what might be better for you. All it's going to cost you is a little more of your time is to schedule a one-on-one -on -one presentation for you and your team. Elizabeth can help you schedule that. We'll be sending an email to all that attended. And uh, we'll be asking some questions, learning more about your particular business, and schedule this one-on-one -on -one presentation 
to, to decide what you want to do in the way of your proof of concept and where you want to go from here. We're very flexible in our time scheduling for that. So we're wrapping up here, just about time to get over. So let's get some questions from the, the audience here. Does anyone have, if you have any specific questions, if you could not email them, but if you could put them in the chat box, that would be really helpful. So Elizabeth will be reading the questions here. One, one question um, is, how long does it take to learn the software? You know, that's a really good question, and I think the best one to answer that is our resident expert on the software, which is Kaylin. Yeah, so when I learned the software, um, I knew nothing about um, the software beforehand, had never really messed with it. Um, I will say it took about a week to just sit down and play with the software and become comfortable with it. Um, and then by the end of the second week, I was producing and designing um, templates that I was actually posting on the ESLs themselves. So um, I would say about two weeks to become completely comfortable with the software. Um, luckily, one reason why we love display data is that they have a very extensive manual that really helps break down the software so it's easier to use. And like Mark said, um, their customer service is out of this world. Um, so they're really good at um, getting back to you with any questions um, that you might have that, um, yeah, you just don't understand that need to in order to move forward. Oh, great. And then, Kaylin, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were self-taught, right? I mean, you just had the manuals in, in your computer and maybe you talked to them a little bit. Is that right? Did you? Yes, 100% self-taught. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we, you, anyone that buys from us will have us. Yes, so, absolutely. So, 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 you know, you, you learn it on your own, but you, you have us. You pick up the phone, you send us an email, we're going to have, we're going to help you. That's what our job is. Absolutely. Our most, the last thing we want to do is to sell you electronic shelf labels and have them just sit there in your back room or sit there on the shelf and never change. That doesn't do either one of us any good. So I hope that answered your question. Are there any more questions, Elizabeth? Um, there was one more. Um, how do how do we figure out or how do we go about calculating the cost of the of doing the manual changes today? Yeah, that's a real good question. That really is, and I wish I had a, an easy answer that's going to cost you twenty five cents to change each label, like the people at the grocery store did. But we are going to have some questions that we can send you to help your brain start calculating the 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 the, the cost for those labels. So in our one on one presentation with you, hopefully we can do that, or just with communication, we'll help you determine what that cost is going to be. Okay, so. We're running out of, yeah, it looks like it's 12.30 right on the, on the half hour there. So if, uh, yeah. if no one else has any questions, Elizabeth, is that, is that the questions there? Um, that is everything I have right now. Okay, great. Well, thank you, everybody. I really uh, appreciate your time. We, we do, and we hope we can serve you here. We'll be sending out an email to everybody, but please do let us know if we can help when you'd like to have your presentation, and if you would like a quote or any questions. Thank you, and hope to talk to you soon. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye.